uh, cover a very basic but I think really important uh, topic, uh, project basically, that we are going to essentially build a um, pan and tilt simulation and then we're going to use that simulation to generate some code so that we can do face tracking in simulation and once we have it then we will use all that knowledge to apply it in a real robot which we will connect through ROS Development Studio um, and, yeah, and we'll test that our code works so essentially I've left in the notebook uh, information about the web and also if you have any questions whatsoever just email me at uh, on my account and I'll answer all your questions gladly okay so the motivation of this speech is basically to that to learn basic ROS how to go from this uh, real robot that we have a pan and tilt in this case with a Raspberry Pi so how to go from a simulation to this real one yeah and then we will cover a bit how to connect easily to this robot yeah uh, yeah i'll go um, explaining the code i won't generate all the code because it's a lot of code to generate in 40 minutes but i'll try to explain all the main details and the things that i found difficult and challenging and i think that you'll find problems okay so let's start so if you go to this first notebook uh, simulation of the pan and tilt so I always recommend and this is something that not a lot of people in the robotics business do again, sadly is that when you work and when you want to work with real robots you can't start with a real robot you have to start with the simulation uh, this has mainly one advantage which is um, energy consumption so um, you if you generate a simulation of your real robot you spend you'll spend more time coding and less time spent in hardware issues and connection issues and basically you'll go much faster developing the code so here in the construct we uh, always recommend to generate and work with a simulation 90 percent of your code and then the other 10 percent work on uh, on the real and you have to adapt always you have to adapt something that you didn't have uh, in mind when you were coding for the simulation yeah or maybe the simulation wasn't well done yeah so let's start the simulation shall we so the first thing is we're going to start a simulation there are various ways to do it in roster Learning studio but um, the basic one would be to just go to um, simulations from my workspace and then look into this all the list of launches that it's automatically detected by cross development studio but in your local computer would be exactly the same just that you would launch it through the web shell yeah so we go here and we select pan and seal description main simulation and we hit launch While we wait that this launches, um, you can open here in Tools the IDE and then you can open here in another tab. I already done that, so let's have a look. So while it loads, we're going to go through the code. So essentially in, uh, in this ROS project, we have three main packages, pan and tilt common, which are or it is all the code that you need for the simulation and that it will be shared with the simulation and with the real robot okay and then we have these two dependencies that are person sim that we use this to um, simulate persons uh, and then we have spawn robot tools which is a, a package that we generated here in the construct that basically uh, makes uh, spawning uh, URDFs, SDFs, chakros, and other stuff much easier. Yeah. So here we have the simulation already. 
So let's have a look what we have here. So we have uh, our person that we're going to use for the face tracking, and then we have a dummy a head that we will do the, the paper of the pan and tilt. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the notebook. So when you have this already launched, then let's have a look at the simulation which you need to create. Yeah. So I'm explaining all this for the pan and tilt, but uh, more or less, I it's the same structure in any robot whatsoever. So if you go to pan and tilt control and you go to pan and tilt description, uh, first of all, the name of the package, which is uh, pan and tilt description, we here in the construct, we made like a standard way of doing packages for ourselves, and we highly recommend that you do so also. Uh, all the things that have to do with simulations, do it in uh, pan and tilt, so your, then the name of the simulation um, and underscore description, because other people will understand what it is. If you put pan and tilt, I don't know what, no one will know what's that package for, okay? So uh, essentially what we have done is launching this main sim. So let's have a look. Uh, it's a normal launch, like always. And what we're doing is spawning, launching a gazebo world with uh, this uh, light world, which if we go here to the world and we have a look, it's very simple world, which is a ground plane and a spotlight. The spotlight it's needed so that the camera can do face tracking. Otherwise, without light, a bit, a bit difficult. Okay, so we have the world. Now we need to spawn. So we have these two launches, which are spawn the pan and tilt and control the pan and tilt. This one spawns the physical simulation, but doesn't activate the control. And this one will activate the control. Yeah. So we'll have a look, especially at this one, because I think it's more important and useful for people that want to do the transition from real, sim real robots to simulation. And yeah. And then we start the, the pan and tilt server that we will talk in depth. And finally, we initialize the person, which spawns the person. This is in person sim. so. This is a git that it's public, so you can have a look. I've left the in the video, uh, sorry, in the in the notebook, the git, so you can have a look. And finally, we start this iCOG face tracker that we're using, and we start the tracker. So, what does this mean? So let me let me go. Now oh, let's go step by step. So let's have a look at the simulation. We won't go much into detail, but I want to explain the, the structure. So essentially what we do when we spawn a pan tilt chakra, we're calling this launch. And as you can see, we're using this spawn robot tools package and spawn robot chakra multiple. And uh, that, that allows us basically to give a name and, and a chakra file and the position and orientation and it will manage the spawning in Gazebo. So I highly recommend that you use this to have less problems spawning stuff in Gazebo. So let's have a look at this, pan and tilt chakra. So this structure is used by loads of robots uh, in made in Gazebo. It allows you to make simulations much more modular and you can, like, for example, I don't want to put the face, or I don't want to put the camera. I just go here and I just comment. Then if I spawn again, we won't have the camera. Yeah. So that's the main advantage of using uh, chakras. And here we have defined different chakras that will be loaded and used by these that were defined in face or in main camera. So I'll, I want you to just have a look at the face, basically. 
uh, which would be if you had to create your own this would be the main structure that would generate the simulation and essentially what we have is just a base link and a yaw and a pitch yeah so that's the basic definition of a pan and tilt and then we have this face link, which is the one that has this mesh head. It's this one that we are seeing here. Yeah, you would use the one that you want. And that's quite it. Remember always to put the gazebo uh, um, parameters to have physical properties Yeah, and the materials. And yeah, that's more or less the, what I wanted to talk about the simulation. I know there's a lot of stuff, but we don't have time to go in depth there. So uh, let's go back. So once once we have the spawn and we have the, the control uh, that, let me just show you. It's a very, very basic control. We just have a state publisher and then we have uh, opposition controller for pitch and real so very simple if you go here and I'm explaining this just because it's important to understand afterwards for the face tracking server so there we go so if you do a raw topic echo uh, let's try we have these controllers so position controller here and and then we have the other one right there and the yaw and the pitch which it's here exactly yeah and with these commands you can move the the header run we're going to do it in a minute so let's go to the notebook again let's move the pan and tilt manually okay and then i'll explain the pan and tilt server and so on so you can have a, a more in-depth idea of what we're doing so we open this shell and we launch. There we go. Let me put it here and let me open the simulation window here. There we go. Okay. So basically this client, what it does is use the server that we just launched. That we will we are going to see in a minute how it's done. And if, for example, I say, I don't know, like, uh, um, these and zero tilt, and you see that the simulation just moved there, or I can put like uh, zero and 45 degrees. There you go. So basically, it's how I control the the servers, the simulated servers inside. Um, the simulation. It's very important to note that this will be exactly the same for the real robot. Yeah, so let's have a look how this works. So uh, just let's go to the main launch. And you see that we start this start pan and tilt server sim launch. So let's have a look. It's in pan and tilt control. Again, I highly recommend that things that are not related to the simulation put them in a package elsewhere and that has an appropriate name for that. So let's have a look. So we start pan and tilt server. And there we go. So you can see that it's just starting a Python uh, script and that has two arguments the hardware, so if it's simulated or not, and if we're using Raspberry Pi. And you say, why do I need this? So let's have a look. So if we go to Pan and Tilt Server and have a look there, there we go. So this is the heart, beating heart of this, uh, because it allows us to essentially use afterwards the face tracking without caring if it's a simulation or the real robot and this is the power of ROS that it allows us through topics to decouple a simulation or real, real robots from anything else 
That way you can generate the code for both or for other systems yeah, that use the same protocol of the same topics or the same services. Yeah, so I won't go into detail again, but essentially what it is is a class that uh, subscribes to this pan and tilt uh, topic, which has this custom pan and tilt messages. So let's have a look. And there's no mystery here. So it's just two floats, pan and tilt. Nothing very special. And for the people that don't know a lot of Rust, you'll have to change this in the CMake list so to configure this so that you have this compiled here, okay, in the CMake list. Yep. Okay. So essentially, we have this that reads from this topic, and then we initialize uh, um, a class depending on if it's simulated or not. Why? Because this server is the one that communicates the, these values to the simulation or to the robot, real robot, to move the servers. Yeah? So if we go to um, these two that are defined, so you can see that it's this one is defined in the move sim, and this one is defined in the pan and tilt move package, which is defined in the real one. So in this case, we don't have it here. Yeah. Okay. So, and in the simulation, if we go here in the tilt move sim, what it does is publishing those commands that I talked showed you just a minute ago. Yeah. Okay. So let's have a look. There you go. So we have, and yeah. So now let me show you through the GUI graphical interface what we have to connect to the last one. So there you have the um, the face tracking that it's already doing the face tracking there. You see the square there, and this is being published in a topic called um, I think it was faces. Let me face. There we go. So it's detecting the face, and that connects with the next part, which is the face tracking. Yeah. So uh, let's go to the ID again. Uh, so this is clear, right? So we have the simulation that has the world. We spawn the pan and tilt that it's simulated that we talked about there. And then we start the server that takes in pan and tilt uh, commands so that someone tells it where to move the servers, yeah? Who's that one? Well. Now we don't have it activated, and that's because uh, we will have to launch it, okay? So just talk about the tracker, which is the one that punishes the faces that we will use to then send the commands to the pan and tilt, okay? So talk about this, and I won't go into depth because it's a, it's a package of its own. I've left uh, the git, so you can have a look. Essentially, what I want to talk about is this. This package that we just uh, copied and made our own here, we modified it so that it takes these to uh, this, this topic, which is the name of your camera feed, yeah, of your camera topic. And from there, it just makes all the things that it has to do to give you the face um, topic that we just saw here for the detections. Yeah, just a warning that I tell you here is the fact that uh, you have to be very careful where this um, this is taking the the hard escape frontal XML because by default it takes it from one place that maybe you won't have it. So to change it. Just go to the source in the ICOG face tracker, and there you'll find, let me just look for it quick. 
Okay, so here you will state the the file. Okay, yeah, perfect. So uh, that's that's quite it. So let's have a look on how to use all this data. So we have the Panel Tilt Publisher, we have a Subscriber Story, and we have the Faces Publisher. Yeah. So now we have to join these thing, two things together. So we go here and we launch this start face tracker. Okay. So let me just, okay. So what happened there? Let me show you there. It's a very good exercise that. So if we go to this start face tracker, which is in pan until control, let me close this face tracker. You see that I'm starting with these values, which are for the real one. So what do I have to do? Just comment. This what what it does is initialize my my face my pen tilt in a position where I hope that I find some faces. Yeah, because I don't have a searching faces mechanism implemented here. So there we go. So we go here again and start it again. Okay, there we go. So now it moved and we have face tracking. So you see that it's trying to track the face of the person. So now we can we can go here to the GUI and you see that it's tracking. Perfect. Now let's do it a bit more complicated for him. So let's move the person. Okay. Okay. So let me put this on this here you can see here we go so now with the keyboard you can move the person around and put it again and you see that it adapts and centers the face again to where it was let's move it once more uh, what too many windows here Okay, there we go. There we go again. So there we have it. So it's tracking, 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 and moving to the person. Great. So we have our system already running. Um, I don't know how I'm going on time. So, yeah, so let me just and um, yeah so i think i'm going to to go to yeah let me show you this so now we have the the face tracking working in simulation everything working no problem so now that we have it more or less working now it's time to connect to the real robot. Yeah. So let's let's do that. So I can finish the simulation. Let's close everything. Okay. And now uh, let's jump to the other notebook. So you won't have the pen and tilt at home, I suppose, but you can do the same procedure as I'm doing here 
in your local computers and consider that local computer as the pen and tilt. You won't be able to move it, but you'll be able to do the connections and all that stuff, yeah? So, real connection. First thing is close the simulation because we don't want anything published there. And the first thing is that we need to install this um, real uh, ROSDS real robot connection and git inside our robot. In this case, my um, pan tilt. So let me share. There we go. So I have it already here. So let me just go out. So, as, as I said, uh, you won't be able to move a pan and tilt, but you'll be able to, uh, to connect to your system and install and all that stuff, okay? So, there we go. So, you would have to do an SSH to your system and then uh, clone this repo. And if you go here, you have this real um, robot setup, which we go to our. We just have to execute it like that. I won't do it because I've already installed it. Yeah, but basically that's it. So how can you get the IP of the robot? You can do it in many ways. You can use an application that scans all your system and gets the IP of your robot or just connect and then do and if config well in this case you should know it and somehow once you have it then you can get inside and you if config sorry okay let's continue so now let's do the connection so we have to connect rosds side so you go to real robots and Click here to activate it. Great. This is one side. The other side is you have to um, connect to the IP of your robot. In this case, that's mine. And uh, two dots and 3000, which is a server that it's installed through that command and it will be, be demonized and it will be running all the time yeah so if we refresh then we have to click here to turn on and it will give you give us two things one the device name which is the one that we stated here so i'm going to copy this one and i'm going to put it here and then i'm going to also copy this this is the URL that will be unique for my robot. Yeah, and connect. Fantastic. So now we are good to go. So in theory, now we are able to ping, to see ROS topics, and to launch things in the real robot. So let's let's see if that's true. So one of the first tests that we can do is, uh, let me go here, inside the pan and tilt, in your case, you won't have the pan and tilt, you'll have whatever robot you have or whatever computer you have. So we'll pin this name. It's always the same because in RustyS, it has always the same name, the systems, yeah? Oh, yes. And there we have it. So there's a connection from the pan and tilt or from your computer to RostDS. Let's do it the other way around. So let's go here and do a pan and tilt uh, from RostDS. So I'm going here. Any web shell will do. And pan tilt. There we go. So 48 milliseconds or less. So great. Fantastic. And let's test that ROS works. So the 
best way to do it is just to publish a simple topic. So let me put this one, for example, uh, from, again, your PC, and from my side, the pen tilt, double tab, and put Boscon F2, pen tilt, pen, and tilt. And let's put a rate of one second. Sorry. Let me just. I don't know what happened there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good mistake from my side. Sorry for that. So, what happened there? Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. So, it's because we have to launch a raw score. Where? It depends. So, in my case, I've set it in pen and tilt. You can put it in Ross Development Studio, as you wish. So now let's do that again. Raw score. Okay. And now topic. Okay. And now uh, let's have a look what's here. Ross topic list. And we have it there, Ross topic echo and pen to test. There we go. Fantastic. And to test the other way around, it's the other way around. So let's do it fast. Copy, paste this. Publishing, and now we do last topic. This here. And there we are. I am Ross DS. Fantastic. So we have set up everything. So in theory, we have Ross connected to Ross DS connected to our pan and tilt or to your computer. Okay, your local computer. I reiterate this because it's a concept that maybe it's a bit tricky at first. ROS DS is not your computer, it's server around there, and the other thing is your computer. Okay, so now that we have that settled out, so let's, let's have a look. What do we have to set up in my uh, pen tilt? Let's here, and we need a Katkin workspace, and, and inside it, we have copied two things. One, the pen tilt control git, which we have talked about a lot, and the other one is the pen and tilt real robot, which is one that we didn't have. Why? Because we weren't in the real robot. And this one has only the things related to physical stuff, like the camera, how to set up, and different kinds of systems and so on. I won't go into detail there, but um, I, we have video tutorials about this. So uh, and I think I left some indications in the, in the notebook. And so uh, let's have a look now how to do everything, yeah? So let's kill first the ROS core, because we don't need it now. Now we go to the pen and tilt to your computer, in my case, the pen and tilt. And now, ROS launch pen and tilt real. Uh, This will start all the systems related to the real pen and tilt. So it will activate the camera, it will do all the stuff that we need. Yeah. Okay, great. So now uh, in ROSDS shell, what can we do? So we go to the shell, we do ROS topic list. And see here that now we have 
some other topics that we are not publishing anywhere. So that's because we are publishing through uh, the Rio Robot Connection. So now we are going to, for example, let's launch the client that we launched previously. So there we go. Okay. Okay. And now for for this, I might need to um, change my camera. Okay. There we go. Let me unshare this the screen just a minute. And well, sorry. There we go. Okay. So here, let me share my screen. It's it's okay there in control. Well, yes. Everything okay. So now um, I'm going to go to Roth DS. There we go. And let me, for example, put uh, 90 degrees and uh, zero. There we go. And let me put it a bit better so you can see better. And let's do, for example, 90 degrees and okay, uh, 90 degrees also. There we go. So I want to make this clear that it's we are communicating through ROSDS to the real robot through this real robot connection. Okay. And finally, uh, let's let's have a look at the cameras. So okay. okay, let me select the camera that we are inside. Yeah. Okay, so you're seeing my feed of the camera here. Okay, yeah, sorry. So uh, I have to share my screen for that. Okay, share. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so now you see the feed. There we are. And finally, we're going to start the face tracking. So we have this reel that we just started here. And now we are going to launch the face tracker in RockDS. Okay. So cancel this. Face tracker. Remember that we have to go here and change this to real values because this one is other ones that I saw that they work. Okay, and we launch it. Okay, so there we go. Uh, okay. So let me show you, because it's quite cumbersome, this. So I'm going to, it's, it's okay. Okay, so let me stop sharing and put my camera. So there we go. So now it's moving. I'm moving my head and it's dragging me more or less. There we go. Uh, there we go. As you can see, we can do it much better. But it's not from the connection. It's just my algorithm for tracking. Uh, it's a bit uh, dodgy. But there you have it. So it's tracking me. But the, the face tracking is being executed in ROSDS remotely. Yeah? And thanks to the work that we did with the simulation, I can do this 
really fast. So I, I could change from the simulation to the real one in a matter of, of one day, instead of reiterating and, and doing those tests to make it work in the real robot, which would be very slow. <laughs>